Now, of course, you know it's just about six weeks until the Big Boulder Boulder 10K. We've created a plan for those of you planning to run this race and those who just want to get in shape for summer. It's week four, and here's Ana Cabrera with a running expert on today's training advice. One. So we're now in week four of our training program. As you're gearing up to run or walk the Boulder Boulder, let's bring in Frank Shorter to talk more about what training looks like this week, sort of a recovery week. It is, and, and it means backing off a little bit and getting a sense for running a little under your maximum effort, which you're going to need in that last two weeks leading up to the race. So on Monday, you might run 35 minutes, again, very easily. Conversational pace at an effort where you would sound if we were talking. I that's could walk it. in not the park, right? <laughs> really, you're, you're, the only thing is what you're doing is not confused with walking. Yeah. On Tuesday, you might interject a little of what we call interval training, but you don't need to go to a track. Run three minutes hard, jog three minutes, do that four or five times, total about 25, 30 minutes, and that's it. But just to get a feel for going a little bit harder and a little bit easier. Okay. Wednesday, you rest. Thursday, go out, run 40 minutes, again, easily. Start to develop this habit of, okay, I can go at this rate and make yourself back off a little bit. Because again, they found it's most efficient if you go at that effort to de for developing your cardiovascular system. Going harder is actually not as good. So very easy. Yeah, Friday, cross training, we've talked about that. Saturday, take a day off. Sunday, that's your long run, but again, 45 minutes but make yourself slow down. Actually, make yourself go a little slower. And in addition to exercising, nutrition is another piece of training that's important. Absolutely, and complex carbohydrates. That's what you need because glycogen, that simple sugar that's like stored. Bagels. Yeah, that's it, the <laughs> complex, you know, rice, potatoes. And just make sure you have some at every major meal so that you eat to craving for the carbohydrates because you're going to need to replenish those glycogen stores, that fuel that you've been using. And again, it's not you need a certain amount exactly. It's just kind of developing an awareness of, you know, I'm eating to craving and there's a reason. And, and no-carb diets then aren't good if you're running the Boulder Boulder. No, at, elite athletes have actually found they have difficulty yeah. with that. Good to know. Let's talk a little bit about protein. Chocolate milk, a good recovery drink. Absolutely. Isn't it fun that they find out instinctively what people love to do to recover <laughs> was actually good for you and worked? It does because the chocolate actually, uh, in a way, the caffeine and, and, you know, the endorphins and stuff in it, fine. But the other thing is you need a little bit of protein right after mm -hmm. exercise. Not much, but a little bit. And, and within 20 minutes after exercise, too, take a little bit of carbohydrate because that speeds up the recovery. And finally, you say treats are okay in, in small moderation. Well, I used to cover the five food groups every day when I was training hard. I did. I made sure. And then at 9 o'clock at night, I walked into the kitchen. Anything I wanted was mine. Anything. All right. Well, here you have it from Gotta the have master the reward. here. <laughs> That's right. Thank you, Frank, again for joining us. Again, we'll continue to guide you through as you're training for the Boulder Boulder. Next week, we're talking about eating for performance on race day specifically. So stay with us. For now, I'm Ana Cabrera, 7 News.